This is part two of making an unbraced bowback Windsor chair. That is making it in SketchUp. Last time I showed the tracing of the magazine drawing of the seat. Also we made three components from these tracings. The plain seat outline, the seat sockets for legs and spindles, and also the sight lines as a separate component. These sight lines, however, will need to be modified later in the process. To continue with the seat, make a copy of the seat outline profile without the sockets and sight lines. I'll move the copy over here down the red axis. Use the rotate tool to position the seat in its proper orientation. Rotate tool, hold down the key, go down a red axis to get the right orientation, then start the rotation and click on 90 degrees. I was in parallel projection for the tracing process. Now I'll return to the normal perspective camera. Also, I was using a unique style that created red lines while doing the tracing. Now I want to go back to the standard style with black color. It's a good time to create a scene called seat so we can easily get back to this view with a click of the mouse. Give the seat its thickness of two inches using the push-pull tool. You may see some extra lines along the edge created by the arc segments used to create the seat shape. You can smooth these out using the eraser and tapping the control key. I think there's one more edge over here that we can smooth out. The next step is to add the seat sockets to the chair seat blank. While the seat is open for editing, open the component dialog box and bring over a copy of the seat socket component. Then explode this component. Explode. Now the sockets are an integral part of the seat component. Most Windsor chair seats have a gutter that separates the front contoured seat area from the flat rear spindle socket area. I use a number 11 Vayner carving tool in the shop to make this gutter. In SketchUp, we'll use the Follow Me tool. I need a profile shape for the gutter and use the circle tool with a radius of 1 16th inch.
now that I have the profile shape, I need a path for the follow me. But we need to extend the path beyond the far edge to complete the gutter shape. So with a line tool, I make a short parallel line segment extending out from the seat. Also, SketchUp tells you when you are par parallel with the magenta color. There it is. I know from experience that this small gutter will create very small facets in SketchUp that will be an issue unless I scale up. I'll pick the scale tool and grab a diagonal corner and type 10 for 10 times scaling. This should be enough. Now we're ready for the follow me. Edit the component and select the entire path. That includes the little extra extended line segment here. So select that little piece and then select the rest of the path and then click the follow me tool on the small profile here. Click. There it is. Notice the extension of the gutter just beyond the edge of the seat. This needs to be cleaned up and removed. Select the faces involved. First this face, then this face. Right click and choose intersect with selection. Now you can use the select tool and I'll go right right to left with the select tool and then use the delete key knock that out and knock the other edges out removing all the waste and we've completed the gutter Since we scaled up, it looks clean without some problem, small facet. But now we can return to full size, uh, pick the scale tool, and type 0 0.1 or 0.1, one tenth, to bring the seat down to its original size. The seat needs legs, so in the next stage, I'll show the making and placement of the legs into the seat sockets. And this is where we'll start working with angles that are typical of Windsor chairs.